Welcome to Explorer's Guide Maritime Training. I get a lot of questions on plotting. So what I like to do today is go through and review the plotting principles that we talk about in the class itself and help you out on the uh, various aspects of this to make sure you do well both in the field as well as on the exams. The key thing in plotting is we're going to use our parallel rulers uh, to find various locations. So to do that, it's very important that we square up the rulers with both the uh, longitude lines here as well as the latitude lines. And we do that by moving the, our um, parallel rulers here. And what we want to do is we want to move the parallel rulers so they're exactly uh, parallel to the longitude line right here. It basically just touches the line. That way we assure everything is properly squared and we'll get our correct answers. Uh, if it's, you just take some wild guesses, you're going to get wild answers. You're not going to get correct answers. So here we walked, uh, after I squared up, we walked our ruler over to where we could find uh, a point here, 87 uh, degrees, 49.7 minutes. We don't, now we got our part right here. The rulers are square, so we know that we're accurate. We next draw our line on the chart. And we have our longitude line drawn. To get the latitude, we use our dividers. And what we do is we come here and we find the location that we want on the latitude scale. Next, we bring the dividers over and we put one end on the latitude scale where there's a line running across. They normally run across in units of 10. Uh, secondly, we f put the other edge of the, of the ruler divider rather up on our point, which happens to be 40 degrees, 7.4 minutes. Without moving the, uh, with the dividers, we come back over to the same line that we had on the scale, and then we mark across at the very top here, and this will give us a mark of 40 degrees, 7.4 minutes. And there we have got our location by using the parallel rulers and the dividers. Next, we're going to talk about a three-point fix. A three-point fix helps us find our location out on the water. And it's done by looking at three different objects. We know our vessel's heading here happens to be, uh, heading here is 271 per ship's compass. We take a bearing to each of our points. So here we got one of the uh, lights here. It's 292 PSC. We have another one over here, and then we have another one down here. So we're taking three bearings, uh, one to each of the buoys, and recording those. Next, what we do is we set up our table uh, just like this. At the very top, I have my ship's heading and the deviation that comes from the deviation table. It's very important. The number one mistake is people take deviations off each of the bearings and not off the ship's heading. It must come off the ship's heading. Over here, we got our true, our variation, our magnetic, our deviation, and our ship's compass. Again, our deviations are the same all the way across. Here it happens to be 0.01, and it's the same for all three bearings. Next, we enter the rest of our data. We do our math, and now I have a true uh, for each one of our uh, for each one of our bearings, we now converted them over to true. Next, we line up our parallel rulers. First, we make sure that it's on that little X in the middle of the comp compass rows. And then we use the outer circle, which is true, and we find 139. We convert it 154 PSC to 139. Next, we walk our rulers over to our buoy, and then we draw our line of position. When we do all three of them, we will come up with a three-point fix. And in essence, we're right where the three lines meet. If, in fact, there is a small triangle, we will plot our location in the center of that triangle. Next, we're going to talk about set and drift. All vessels, like our boat right here, are affected by wind and current, and it pushes us off course. And we want to know what our set and drift is so that we can counter it. First, we have to have a location. This is where we started. 
And we have a course line, our DR line. We know our DR line is going to be 340, excuse me, 243 true. We mark the, line, uh, the DR properly with the course on the top and our projected speed at the bottom. And then every half an hour to an hour, we are going to load our location on our DR. And the way we do that is by doing the distance formula. So we know how fast we've gone. We know how long we've been on there, and therefore we should be right where this uh, half circle is. It says that's where we need to be. We do that every half hour. Anytime there's an event, a course change, a speed change, or we fi uh, do an actual fix, we also do the same thing. We note our location. Here we note our location at 1045. In reality, we're actually over here by the blue arrow and not on our DR we got pushed off by set and drift. And we have to determine what that is so we can counter it in the future. Again, we take our parallel rulers, we place it on our set line, and we walk it over to the compass rows and take a reading. And we re take a reading on the side of the rows in which we were pushed. So this happens to be 2, 11, true. It's always in true. Next, we determine our drift. And drift is speed. It's not distance. So we know how far we went because we can measure it right here, 0 0.8 uh, nautical miles. So speed equals add distance, 0 0.8, right here, times 60, divided how long we were on the DR, which gives us a drift of 1.1. Therefore, in this problem, our set was 211, and our drift was 1.1 knots. Uh, people sometimes have a little problem following it. It's very simple if you follow it each of the steps. Again, we have two lines, our DR line and our set line. We must use the formula twice, once for distance and once for speed. We have three relocations, where we started, where we think we are on our DR, and then finally where we actually are. And it came up a little saying, LLD, uh, excuse me, LLFD, LLFS. It's location, line, the distance formula, location, line, the speed formula. And if you do it in those six little steps, you can come out right every time with set and drift. Sometimes we want to know how fast we're going and what time we're going to get there. The time we're going to get there is called uh, estimated time of arrival. We know where we are. We know where we want to go, and we can draw our DR line. Second, we know what time we're going to leave. You know, we're going to leave at 937, and we know how uh, fast we're going to go. Here's our speed, and we know our course. We can measure the distance we're going. We know where we're going, so we can measure that distance. In this case, it happens to be 12.7 nautical miles. We go back to the time formula. Here's our 12.7 miles, and here's our speed. So we're going to be traveled 155 minutes, which is 2 hours and 35 minutes. We need to add that to our start time. So our start time was 637 plus 2 hours and 35 minutes gets us there at approximately 1212. That is our expected time of arrival. If we want to know what our speed made good was, how fast we went, Again, here we have our, our starting point. We know where that is. We have our destination, which we arrived at. We have a line, our DR line, from where we started to where we actually ended up. We determine, again, uh, start and arrival times. Start at 9.37. We got there at 10.44. And finally, what we do is we can measure the distance we traveled. And that distance traveled is 12.7 uh, nautical miles. We travel that in 47, 67 minutes. So we go back to our, our formula. Speed equals distance. It's our distance for 67 minutes. And we come up with 11.4 was our average speed uh, from beginning to end. We also have to do relative bearings. Uh, if you have a radar in which you just simply have heads up uh, mode, we're doing relative bearings. And relative bearings always considers the front of the boat as 000 or 360. 
off to starboard. It's going to be 90 degrees straight off the stern, 180, and off on the port side, uh, 270 degrees. So here we're, we have a course of 271 true. Uh, we're going to take a bearing off a range line right up here. Here's our range line. So on this range line, uh, we have a crew member that's going to take a relative bearing. They don't have a compass in front of them. And he's going to tell the skipper that we're at uh, approximately 135 relative. It's relative, again, to the front of the boat. So if the front of the boat is 000, zero, zero and we're coming over to the starboard side, that angle appears to be 135. But we do it as best as we can. Now, to get it as a true bearing so we can uh, plot it is very simple. We simply add the relative bearing to the vessel's heading. In this case, we have a vessel heading of 271 true. We have a relative bearing of 135, which gives us a true bearing of 406. Well, there is no 406. It only goes up to 360. So we subtract 360, and we get a true bearing of 046 true to our range. Finally, I want to talk a little bit about distance off. Distance off is when we want to know how far off we're from a target. It may be a, a security zone, and it may be um, a area, an endangered area, whatever. But we want to know how far we're going to be off. So the first thing, of course, we do is we know our location, and we know our course. We draw our DR. So we plot our course. Then we take a bearing from our vessel to the target. And that bearing then is plotted. Finally, we know that how our closest point of approach, or our CPA, is when we are perpendicular off our course line to the target. That's when we're going to be the closest. We can measure that distance, and it will tell us how far we're going to be off that target when we pass it. Sometimes uh, of a non-charted topic, here it happens to be a sailboat out there, and we have, again, our start point. We have our DR that we always plot. We've taken a bearing to that target, and we've plotted it. Uh, a while later, we take a second bearing. Again, the more spaces between the first bearing and the second bearing, the more accurate will be our location on the water. Um, the key point, again, is between the two bearings, we must use our distance formula. We know how fast we were going, 11 knots. We travel for 20 minutes, and we divide that by 60, so we should be 3.7 nautical miles further down our DR. So we mark off 3.7 nautical miles when we take that second bearing. It's very critical. Um, we look at now the object on the chart. We do our... our Line, again, uh, perpendicular off our course line. Again, it's really important that it's perpendicular off our course line and not off the bearings. That is our closest point approach. In this case, it's 2.1 nautical miles. Again, I hope uh, this is very helpful. These are the steps that we will uh, have during our exams and the steps that we'll use out in the class. If you have any questions about it, please drop me an uh, email at Explorer Skype. Gary at explorers-guide.com.